Good morning, friends, and welcome to your virtual art class. Today, we are going to delve into the world of op art, which means art um, used to create an optical illusion. So that's the goal, is for us to create an optical illusion. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, your hand so that it looks like it's popping off the page. But before we get started, let's have a little history about op art and talk about um, one of the founders of the movement. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And I have this little presentation to share with you that won't take um, super, super long. So op art, op stands for optical. And optical, as you know, um, is something that deals with your eyes. So here are two great examples of op art. And you may notice that your eyes might do something funny. They might look like they're moving, all right? And that is because your eye is communicating to your brain. And when you have an optical illusion, what happens is that that message gets a little bit mixed up. So optical, what is op art? That's when artists use shapes and colors and patterns in special ways to create images that look like they might be moving or blurring, um, fading away from you. Um, optical illusions happen when our brain and our eyes try to speak to each other in a simple, simple language, but like I said, the, the communication gets a little bit mixed up. So for example, it thinks our eyes told it something is moving, but that's not what the eyes meant to say to the brain. So the eyes are saying, wait, this isn't moving, but the brain is saying, but it looks like it's moving. So you can kind of see the same idea happening with this artwork, how the shapes look like they're moving or vibrating on the canvas. Victor Basily, <clears throat> excuse me, was a Hungarian French artist. He lived from 1906 to 1997, and he was known as the grandfather of op art. And this is one of his earliest images um, and examples of, of op art. It's called Zebra. Victor Vasily wanted to be a neurologist, and a neurologist is a doctor that studies the brain, but he changed his mind and became a graphic designer. So you can kind of see how those two passions um, combined together to create um, this type of art. Wanting to be a neurologist someone that studies the brain, and creating art art, which is um, a type of art that's created to make your, um, your eye and brain kind of play tricks on each other. Here are two more of his artworks. So sometimes, um, I know sometimes when I look at op art, my eyes start to go really, really funny. Um, but, and it makes them look like they're moving and I get a little motion sickness. But today, hopefully our um, artwork will not make you feel <laughs> sick. Anyway, what you need is a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, it is okay if you have lined paper, but it is better if you don't have lined paper. So it can be just copy paper or whatever. Here is an example of uh, what we're gonna be creating. So today I'm just gonna ask you to get a pencil and a piece of paper. The important um, idea behind this is that we're creating curved lines and flat lines to help create the illusion that your hand is going to be popping out of the paper. Now we're gonna do a couple more things uh, to it, but that is something we'll talk about next week. This part of the project 
can be tedious. So you have to be patient and um, you have to really kind of follow directions. My biggest piece of advice for you right now is to make sure that when you're drawing, you're not drawing too dark. Uh, I drew dark on here because I wanted you to be able to see what I'm, what I'm doing, all right? So please, when you're drawing, um, don't draw too dark. The first thing you have to do is trace your hand. So you um, can have someone help you with this if you need to, um, or you can trace um, one of your grown-ups' hands. But uh, the first thing you need to do is, uh, is trace your hand. All right, so I'm just gonna put my hand on here. And the best way I know how to do this is to keep your pencil straight up and down. And I'm just gonna follow as close to my hand as possible. And I'm also gonna make sure that my fingers are spread apart. If they're not, it's going to make it very difficult. So notice I'm just keeping my hand straight up and down, just like that. And I go all the way to the end. Now I'm just going to extend this line a little bit, just like that. And you can see it is pretty light. I've drawn pretty light. And whatever you do, you don't want to darken the outline, OK? Don't darken the outline right now, please. In fact, we're never, we're never going to darken the outline. So you can see on this one, I have these curved lines that are on my hand. And that is the first thing you need to draw. So I am going to draw like rainbows, all right, on my hand. I want to make sure that the... Um, the height of my rainbow is, is in the middle, all right? I don't want to make it over here like that, flat, okay? I want to make it a rainbow. Now, these rainbow lines or these curved lines, as you can see, I'm drawing them dark. Remember, keep yours light. The height is in the middle. It's not over here. It's not over here. You want to keep these lines fairly close together. Do you want them super, super close? Uh, not super, super close, but you don't want them inches apart. If you keep them too far apart from one another, you will not create the optical illusion. So I'm going to say really not any larger than a quarter of an inch. All right. And so I'm going to keep going. And right now, I am only drawing my curved line, all right? I don't need a ruler to do this, obviously. I'm just going nice and slow, and I am creating these lines. This is really the maximum amount of space that you want in between your lines. And I am just going to keep going and fill this space up with these curved lines. Now you might be wondering, oh my gosh, what am I going to do when I get up here? You're going to keep doing the same exact thing. And maybe, see this one's almost getting a little bit too far. But I can make this one smaller and it's not a big deal. If the space in between them vary a lot, it's not such a big deal. You just don't want to end up with a bunch of them that are this wide. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going nice and slow. This is not any kind of a race here. All right. Just like that. And you can still see the height of my rainbow line is still basically in the middle. Now, I'm going to get kind of close to this right here, and that's fine. I'm going to draw my line like this, and it's going to end, and then I'm going to draw 
the one for my thumb, like that. And you might be tempted just to keep going like this, but I wanna make sure that I'm basically kind of keeping them together still, these lines. And that will make more sense when we start drawing the flat lines or the straight lines. All right, so then I'm just gonna keep going with that. And you can see the same thing is gonna start happening with my fingers. Now the wonderful thing about doing this video is that you can stop and pause whenever you need to. All right, now when I get to my fingers, you can see here my curve is kind of flattened. So I think what I need to do is actually go back. I'm glad I made the mis this mistake. I'm gonna go back and make those nice and curved again. Now, this is a good reason why you should draw light. But like I said, I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. So, later on, I can erase those lines a little bit better when I go over them. But I want you to continue with this until you are all done with oops, your lines. I have to go back and do this one. All right, and then I already did that one. So I'm gonna to continue to go all the way up my fingers, just like that. And I'm done with my thumb, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, so you have the idea now of what to do with your fingers. I'm gonna show you what you do with your straight lines. You can kind of start to see what's happening here, right? And remember, do not darken the outline. So here's one that I started, and you can see what you have to do is after you draw all of your curves, now you have to draw the straight lines. I did not use a ruler. I like it like this because it looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more realistic. So wherever this curve stops, then I'm gonna draw a straight line. And these lines are all parallel with one another. They are not going to touch. So wherever I drew the curved line at the end, it's like it's a little continuation, just like that. And I do it on both sides. And I always start at the hand where the curve ended. I don't start at the end of paper, at the end of the paper and hope to meet here. I'm always going to start right like this. And let me show you, let me go back to this one. What happens when you <clears throat> get up here with, with these? It's the same concept. So these are straight. Straight, 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 straight. All right, always going from where they touched. Straight. When you get up here with the fingers, it's really easy to want to make them at an angle, but you want to try to keep it as straight as you possibly can. All right, just like that. They're going straight across and meeting one another. Just like that. Okay. So you're going to keep on going with your fingers, making the curves. All right. And making the straight lines. 
until they get to the very, very end. All right? And that's what it's going to look like. And that's where I want you to stop for this week. I want you to stop there because I want you to take your time while you're doing this, uh, the curved part. So this might take you like a half an hour or so to do. If you're rushing through it, you're not going to get the effect that you want to get. All right. Oops, I gotta fix that. Maybe I won't see a line there, wherever this is. All right, so <clears throat> keep on going. Remember, draw lightly. Another tip is not to make the distance between these curved lines too big because it won't look like an optical illusion. And also not to make them too, too close together because then you might get a little frustrated all right so like i said about a quarter of an inch never any bigger than a half an inch all right have a great day enjoy this i can't wait to see uh, what the pencil result is next week we'll talk about coloring remember don't outline your hand all right take care and have a great day bye